Hi guys and welcome to today's lesson on the normal distribution. Now actually the great thing here is it's just about solving questions on the normal distribution. No endless recap of the theory. That's already been covered in video after video after video. So uh, if you're here for that, oh sorry, not going to happen today. In fact, I'm going to skip this whole recap section altogether and go straight into examples because I think in this situation I can almost recap the theory while doing these examples. So IQ scores and all this type of stuff is is great exam fodder. And the question says, uh, and this is taken from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, which is what I teach my kids from. So this is a great vehicle to be able to sort of uh, let them understand how to solve these questions. But suppose that IQ scores are normally distributed. Now, the first things first, there's very little in statistics that we can actually now deal with, particularly in this course, as they've got rid of so much of it. Thank you very much for getting rid of Markov chains. So we've got the normal distribution, binomial distribution, we've got continuous random variables and discrete random variables. That's what we've dealt with so far. So normally distributed, I now know that I've got a curve here. It's going to be centered with a mean of 100 and a sigma of 15. Right, okay, so what is the probability that a person chosen at random has an IQ greater than 110? Now, I could, if I wanted to, go back and add on all of my individual standard deviations. Remember I told you in a previous video to add them? 130, 145. The interesting thing here is that actually that's not going to help me. It's not a 68, uh, 95, 99.7 question. This says 110, and 110 doesn't fit on any of my boundaries. So I'm actually going to have to use my normal distribution. So I want basically the probability that x is greater than 110. Now, because it's continuous data, it can be greater than or equal to because that 110 actually has a probability of zero. Again, still blows my mind that, that that is true. And so that's what I'm trying to find. Loading up my CAS calculator, it does it all for me. Now, because I'm using the cast pad, uh, I don't have TI Inspire with me. Uh, maybe I'll do videos for that a little bit later on. But to be able to do this, I need to hit interactive distribution and it's a continuous distribution, right? So a normal distribution is continuous. And I want a normal CDF. I don't want an individual probability. I want a collection of probabilities. And I always think of a C as cumulative or collection of probabilities. And up comes my calculator with four things. A lower bounds. Now, because we want X to be greater than or equal to 110, that's going to be my lower bounds. My upper bound, well, there's no limits to this, it would appear. I mean, we could put, you know, I don't know what value we'd put, actually. But I know it's just going to be infinity. So I'm going to go to math and put infinity. Now, with the Casio class pad, I do not know why they put sigma first. The number of times I've put my mu value in here and then got the answer wrong because I've got the wrong way around, I can't, if I had a dollar, then I'd be rich. But sigma is 15, mu is 100, and then I hit enter, and out comes that fabulous value. So actually here, I get 0 0.2. 2525, rounding to four decimal places. Now, I know the question doesn't say to round to four decimal places, but the part of it is that in exams, generally speaking, they'll ask for it to be four decimal places. We want it to now be less than 75. But we're going to use the same idea. This time, we want the probability that x is less than or equal to 75 is going to be. So, interactive distri uh, distributions, continuous, and normal CDF again. Now, my lower bound in this situation is actually going to be, well, I'm going to put minus infinity because I'm dealing with a normal distribution. Yes, um, but personally, it would be unusual for a, a person to have a negative IQ. Let's actually do both and see what happens. So maths, I'm going to do negative infinity. My upper bound in this situation is 75. My sigma is 15. My mu is 100. Hit enter. And out comes my probability of 0 0.0478. And eight. Again, to four decimal places. Let's bring my calculator up and just see what happens when I put uh, 0 in for this. Because I'm going to be fascinated to know what actually happens myself. 0. And hit enter. And lo and behold, almost the same answer. What do we notice? That last decimal place is a 6 against a 7. But to all intents and purposes, 0 would actually have worked there because you can't have a negative um, IQ. Part 3, greater than 130. So the probability that x is greater than 130, given that they have an IQ of greater than 110. Now, that's our conditional probability. And I remember that my conditional probability says that a given that b is the probability of A and B 
divided by the probability of b. Okay, so we're looking for the probability that x is greater than or equal to 130 and x is greater than or equal to 110. Do you see the trick of the language there? Divided by the probability that x is greater than or equal to 110. Now, the good news is we've already worked out part uh, that part in part a, so I'm going to do equals, and I already know it's 0 0.2525. Now, word of warning here, although I'm going to put that value in, that's not the value I'm going to use on my calculator. The fact of this is, if I look at this, the fact that probability that x is greater than or equal to 130 and it's greater than or equal to 110 is basically just saying the probability of x is greater than or equal to 130. So, firing up my calculator, we're going to do interactive distribution continuous normal CDF. I want it to be greater than 130. So there's 130. We're going to do my upper limit as infinity, not double infinity. Not, not that I imagine that would work. 15 and 100. Hit enter, and what do I get? So that would come out to be 0 0.02275 da, 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 divided by 0 0.2525. Now, as I say, so uh, putting my division sign, what do I want? 0.02275. So that value is going to copy and paste into the top. And there's my greater than or equal to 110. And press enter, and out comes the fabulous value of 0 0.0901. 0.09. 01. To go back to my question, to be allowed to join an elite club, a potential member must have an IQ in the top 5% of the population. What IQ score would be necessary to join this club? Now, when I look at this question, I'm like, oh, hold on a moment, you've given me a percentage. You've given me a, a probability, uh, something in this graph I now know. Drawing a quick sketch, I now know, because the question is saying to me, it wants the top 5% of my population. So I know that value there is 0 0.05. We are trying to find this value here and what it turns out to be. Now, because they've given me a percentage, I know it's an inverse norm CDF question because they've given me an area and I can find values from that. So firing up my calculator, I go interactive distribution uh, inverse and inverse norm CDF. Now, the Casio class pad, I think it's awesome because it says, well, where is the, you know, the area situated? And that's what this tail setting is. Is it the left, the center, or the right? Well, I'm going to say it's on the right. The probability is 0 0.05. Now, if I left it as um, 1 and 0, it would give me a Z score, which I could then use my formula to go back. But the great thing is, I don't have to because I know my sigma is 15. I know my mu is 100. And it's now going to give me the exact data item that tells me where 5% is. And lo and behold, up comes 124.67. So to be able to get into the top 5%, I would need to score, why is my screen not moving over? I would need to score greater than 124.67 as an IQ, or well, that's what my IQ would be. And it didn't say it around it to any specific uh, decimal place. So life is good. Example two, these questions I see in exams all the time. And in fact, there are only two examples in this, this lesson. The weights of cats are normally distributed. So here we go. They are normally distributed with, ah, now this is interesting. It doesn't give me a standard deviation or a mean. What it's telling me is 10% of cats weigh more than 1.8 kilograms. So they've given me a data item. They've given me a value of X and they've given me a percentage. So I know that that's 10%. 15% of cats weigh less than 1.35. So there's 1.35, and I now know that that is 15% of cats. Find the mean and the standard deviation. Oh, interesting. Do I have enough information? Well, I should, Coco, and this goes back to using Z scores. You would say, well, I, don't know. I can find out a Z score for each of these data items here. And you're gonna say, well, why do I need to know that? Well, the only thing that I have as a formula that links mu and sigma is z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. I'm looking for mu and sigma. I'm looking for two unknowns. And to be able to do that, I'm actually gonna to need to have two z scores. 
And where do you think I'm going to get these z-scores from? Well, a z-score is made up by this x value, which is a specific data item of my normally distributed data. Mm, have they given me data items? I think they have. They've given me a 1.35 and a 1.8. Marvelous. So I now know that's going to be 1.35 minus mu over sigma. And I know that that's going to be 1.8 minus mu all over sigma. So to be able to have uh, two unknowns, I've got to have two equations, which means I've got to find these z scores. And how do I do that? Well, they've given me a percentage of the area or a probability if it was going to be a PDF. So what I can now do is, again, fire up my CAS calculator and go interactive, uh, distribution, inverse, and normal CDF. Right, because they've given me an area, and I'm going to do my left tail first. That's this section with a 15%. The probability is 0 0.15. Don't put 15 in there. And I'm going to leave my sigma and mu as 1 and 0, because I want that z-score. And to have a z-score, it's got to come from the standard normal distribution. When I hit enter, out comes minus 1.036. So minus 1.036. And there are other numbers as well. Now, I'm just going to write those as they are, but I'm going to remember to use my calculator to help me. Now, let's find the Z score for the 1.8. So, interactive, distribution, inverse, normal CDF. Uh, this time, I want the right because it's on the right of my normal distribution and its probability is 0 0.1, leaving mu and sigma as uh, 0 and 1, and that gives me 1.28155, so 1.2815, and so it goes on. Mm, okay, so what I tend to do now is just equate these, but to do that, I'm going to equate it in terms of u, so I'm going to make both equations equal u mu first, so minus 1.036 times sigma is equal to 1.35 minus mu, that's my first equation, and my second equation is going to give me 1.2815 sigma is 1.8 minus mu. Now, there may be lots of other ways of doing this and shortcuts, but I don't know, maybe I'm just a creature of had it. Making those equal gives me, uh, or rather rearranging from mu gives me 1.35 plus 1.036 sigma. And mu is equal to 1.8 minus 1.2815 and sigma. It's really hard doing this to make sure you don't make a sigma look like a 6. Now, by equating those, if they are the same, then they are the same. I can use my CAS calculator to help me solve this. So I'm going to go keyboard. Thank you very much. Solve 1.35 plus. Now, what was it? This value here. I'm going to highlight that value there without the negative. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to put x for my sigma or sigma is equal to 1.8 minus this 1.2856 value. Where are you? You're going to go in there. Yep. Thank you very much. Times x, comma x, and close my bracket. It gives me sigma because that's what I'm trying to find of 0 0.194. So that's my sigma of 0 0.194. And knowing this, I can now put that back into one of my original equations, which told me that. Uh, mu was going to be equal to 1.35 plus 1.036 times 0 0.194. Move it up so that my head's not in the way. So loading up my calculator gives me 1.35 uh, plus, I want this 1.306 business. And we're going to times that by my x value that they gave me here. Again, I'm going to use all the decimal places. This is the great thing about this calculator. Just drag and drop and press enter. And that gives me a mu of 1.55 to two decimal places. This question that I've just done here, making it smaller so that it all fits onto the screen, is a textbook question. Now, not that it just came from the textbook. It has been in every exam that I've ever seen, every test I've ever seen, because it tests your understanding of the normal distribution, Z scores, areas bit of algebra, simultaneous equations are all in that one question. So if ever you were going to revise and revise and revise, my advice is to have a go at this one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there were only two questions, which pretty much covered everything I think we can use for the normal distribution. It has been awesome having you along for the ride. Thank you so much for, for, for dropping in. Now, uh, if you're watching through YouTube, have you subscribed yet? No, still not. Oh, come on, guys, what do I have to do? 
hit that button there to subscribe. And do me a favor, tell all your friends. Greatly appreciate it if you do. Otherwise, there's another video loading just over there for you to watch. It's been good. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.